Hey church family, I wanted to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement as we continue to pray for the outcome of this election. Now, you might be thinking, we already know the outcome of this election. That's right, it was last Saturday night when Joe Biden was announced as our new president-elect. And while I have no doubt that every Democrat was thrilled as they watched the victory speech of their candidate, I was watching the speech as well. And, and you know, I was, I was a little taken back by, by how he opened up his speech. You, you know, he declared, first of all, my fellow Americans, the people of this nation have spoken. They have delivered us a clear victory and a convincing victory. But is that the case? Is it a clear and convincing victory? I mean, if so, then, you know, I'll be the first to encourage every American to accept the results of the, of the election. If it's a clear and convincing victory, I'll be the first one to say, let's get behind President Biden and, and, and let's, you know, try to unify our nation, right? Unfortunately, it's not as clear and convincing as he would have us to believe. There are so many claims of voter fraud right now that it's difficult for those who are on the right to set aside suspicions that the, the, that the Democrats are actually engaging in voter fraud in order to steal the election. And while it's important for us to realize that every accusation of voter fraud must be proven with solid evidence, there does seem to be some good evidence for some of the accusations that are currently being made. For example, there's a social worker in Mexia, Texas, who was just charged with 134 felony counts involving election fraud. Last September, 19 people in North Carolina were charged with voter fraud after false, falsifying you know, voter registration information. And again in September, there was a Democratic mayoral candidate here in Texas who was arrested and charged with voter fraud after he allegedly applied for 84 mail-in ballots. According to a press release issued by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, it was Azul Mirza Muhammad, a candidate in the city of Carrollton, who was charged with 109 felonies related to voter fraud, which included 84 counts of mail ballot application fraud and 25 counts of unlawful possession of official mail ballots. Now, these cases have yet to be tried, and yet there was enough evidence of voter fraud to go ahead and make the arrests. And listen, uh, this, isn't, this is just a scratch of the surface. The evidence continues to pour in, which could, in fact, substantiate more and more of the accusations of voter fraud. For example, you know, there's new evidence that a software glitch in a Michigan tabulation machine actually turned 6,000 Republican votes into votes for Democratic candidates. And, and this just so happened to turn a, a red county blue. What's even worse is that 47 counties in Michigan use the same tabulation software. And, and seeing how this uh, was a battleground state, then we must agree that this at least deserves further investigation. The Nevada Republican Party also announced last Thursday that it's actually sent a criminal referral to U.S. Attorney General William Barr uh, with allegations that state that uh, 3,602 uh, 3, cases of voter fraud exist. And, 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 the, and the, the Trump campaign's legal team also claims in Pennsylvania alone that 600,000 ballots are in question because they were counted without any poll watchers observing to ensure that they were legitimate as state law requires. And in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, there are upwards of 60 poll watchers who will testify that they were uniformly deprived of their right to inspect any single part of the mail-in ballots. There are videos of vans dropping off ballots at you know, 4 a.m. in the morning, and, and there's videos of blank ballots being filled out at counting locations, and, and there's claims that ballots were being backdated so that they could brought in, be brought in after the fact, not to mention the allegations of voters who are uh, you know, uh, provably either deceased or underaged. And all of this is just quickly being dismissed by the Federal Election Commission. As a matter of fact, it was last Saturday morning on CNN when the commissioner of the FEC, the, the Federal Election Commission, uh, she declared this, there is no evidence of any kind of voter fraud. There is no evidence of illegal votes being cast. Ellen Weintraub, who is a registered Democrat, uh, she assured her audience that, you know, that there are, that, that they're, they're already certain, they're already, you know, uh, completely certain of the fact that, that, that there's no evidence of any kind of any voter fraud. Now, I'm not here to argue that all of the claims of voter fraud are legitimate. And to be honest, I have no clue how to even begin an investigation of all the claims that are being made because there are so many. But what I can be certain of is this. 
that there hasn't yet been enough time for the Federal Election Commission to actually spend time examining all of the allegations. How can she say that there's no evidence when they haven't had enough time to even investigate all of the claims? And yet they're already assuring us that there's nothing to see here, just keep moving. Now let's not forget that the leaders of the Democratic Party, they spent two years and nearly 32 million taxpayer dollars investigating their claim that Trump engaged in election interference back in 2000, 2016, working together with the Russians. And while it's true that the Mueller report found no evidence of collusion, it's also true that the leaders of the Democratic Party have continued to create political conflict here in our country by accusing Trump of everything from systemic racism uh, to the murder of those who have died from COVID-19. Now listen, if our government is willing to spend two years and more than $30 million making sure that the 2016 election was in fact fair, then shouldn't they be willing to spend two months investing all of the allegations of voter fraud so that every American can be convinced that the outcome of this election was also fair? If Biden wins fair and square, then we ought to support him as our next president. And yet at the same time, if he truly wants to bring America together, as he claims he does, then he also ought to support the investigation of voter fraud so that we can all be confident that his presidential appointment is in fact the will of we the people. Let's continue to pray for our nation. Let's continue to pray that the Lord will help us to, to see every opportunity to be a witness for our Savior in, in, in these crazy times. And with this as the goal and recognizing that we're here to lead people to Jesus first and foremost, I encourage every Christian, let's continue fighting the good fight of faith, all for the glory of God.